Hey guys, welcome back again from Tampa Bay. Today, I've got a review I'm actually excited for. And yes, I showed the other bike in the intro video. We're just swapping here for same difference, different colors. This is the 2018 KTM Duke 390. I'm actually interested in possibly buying one of these. I'm looking for a third bike just as something funky and different and fun. And this might fit the bill. Where is the starter button? <laughs> uh, down here? Yep. Wow, can't even see it. It's flush with the controls from my point of view. Beautiful screen. Oh, God, I love TFT displays. That is just fantastic. It's quite deep, too. There's a top glass. It's dusty. Beautiful. Oh, wow, I hate the uh, update. That is horribly slow. definitely have to fix that. So this is basically a big fun single cylinder bike and I was following one recently and it sounds dang good. I don't know if he had a pipe on that one or not. This one's very tame. We're just waiting to pull out here. So initial thoughts just sitting on it here. Um, taller than I thought. I can stand up but the seat completely follows me. I've got no gap under me, but you sit on it and the whole suspension just squishes down and easily flat footing it with a lot of knee bend. If you're on the shorter side, this is going to work for you fine. You only look like a circus bear a little bit. <laughs> Strong like circus bear. <laughs> so we've got a really, really chintzy clutch lever here, this whole thing. Let me put it in neutral so I can show you better. Whole thing just super floppy. That's terrible. Brake is better. Still got a lot of play, but this clutch is janky, man. I don't know if it's just this demo unit. When we get off this ride, I'll have to check that one, but I doubt it's this particular unit. It's got a lot of hinges on it. So, definitely a budget bike. Got controls here for the signals. Feels good. Some digital switches here to go through the menus. Flash to pass. Should be a push, yep, push for bright controls. I like the info in here. Battery voltage, you don't see that on hardly any bikes. Let's see what these do. Oh, that's cool. Whole new menu comes up. Average speed, fuel range. So it doesn't cycle through. Yeah, you can kill it for a minute. Oh. He's getting his gloves. His wife had to go get him a pair of gloves. Okay. That's horrible. <laughs> so I crash it? No, it's like it's brand new, I think. They're the same. Huh. Take two. So going through the menu here, some pretty nice options. Got two levels of ABS. I've got it on road. Gear indicator in the top right there. Big digital speedometer and that horribly delayed tachometer. Water temp and fuel gauge. Easy enough to see. Very high res, beautiful display itself. And I'm in direct sun here. Absolutely perfect, flawless display. And he's got a problem on his <laughs> Yow. He's got a sticking throttle. Looks like the uh, return spring is off. So it looks like I chose the correct bike. I gave him first choice. Sorry, buddy. He said he watches. I hope you get to snag another one real quick on the next ride. So first impressions of the suspension, not too bad. Wow, the clutch engagement is super out there. Very smooth. Red line is, trying to look down here, about 10 and a half, maybe 11. It's hard to tell with how slow it updates. 
no vibration. This is amazingly smooth. They must have some counterbalancers going on. I expected a lot of thump for a single cylinder, but it's just a very simple, easy pull. Let's go up in the revs here. Obviously not a ton of power. The only vibration I'm feeling way up in the RPMs is in my legs, in the frame itself. Nothing through the handlebars, nothing through the pegs. Up in top gear here, I feel a little bit of just piston vibration, just engine normal running thump through the bars. And that's only when it's going, I'm going to say lugging it down, but we're at 5,000 RPM here at 50 miles an hour in top gear. can hardly hear the exhaust at all. I would definitely want to put some type of pipe on it. With it screaming up here at eight, 9,000 RPM, you can begin to hear a little bit of a wah. You guys hopefully can hear something, but the wind noise is louder than the exhaust other than that. Very surprised how smooth it is. Suspension is great. This is amazing. It's plush and compliant, but I'm not bouncing around. I am not out of it literally feels way better than the stock FZ09 to give you a comparison and that's a far more expensive bike so they definitely put some money into the suspension on this from the factory hopefully we'll hit some curves now this road is very smooth but I'm very familiar with it and I'm just floating along nice and controlled bar width is excellent I expect it to be a little on the narrow side, kind of like, say, the Ninja or the R3, uh, Ninja 300, I should say. But this is actually a little bit wider. It's completely normal. Same as a SV650 or an FZ07. A little bit narrower than the FZ09. I'm only mentioning that because that's what I rode today, so i am obviously got the muscle memory. It's got a slight backward cant. Very natural feeling in the hands. Grips are quite plush rubber, no vibration, very comfy, and they're normal size. Mirrors are not too bad. They're very clear, first of all, and I can actually see quite a bit out of them. I've only got about a quarter of it showing with my arm. Other than that, it's nice, clear road. All right, hitting that little bumpy strip there. Yeah, very impressed. Soaked them right up. No bounce. There's hardly any brake dive out of the forks. Rear shot, I didn't mention it yet, but I'm 250 pounds. Six foot two, to give you a comparison. Second gear here, plenty of pull in the low RPMs. go down into first I'm used to a quick shifter see in the low and mid rpms it actually has a nice pull plenty of power for normal street riding absolutely does not seem like a relatively small single cylinder bike seems like a mid-sized twin as far as its performance. I'm sure it's a very lightweight bike and that's helping. It does lose some in the very upper RPM so it's not something I would probably want to completely wind out shift to shift. Right about there so looking down right about 10,000. I'm at wide open throttle right now. Right about 10,000 so just about 500 from its red line it does start to peter out. Very smooth on the downshift. It feels like a slipper clutch. I didn't look to see if it had one, but it definitely is performing like one. If you keep the RPMs low, the exhaust at the low speeds definitely sounds a lot nicer. It's got a little bit of a snarl to it. Not exciting, but not bad. Whew, man, I smell that guy in front of me. I don't know if you can see it, but he was pouring out some smoke there, and it smells like... Uh, 
It smells like burnt clutch, but it's from his exhaust. Oh, it stinks really bad. So it's hard to tell what gear I'm in because it's so smooth and I can't hear the exhaust at all. That's why I keep looking down at the gear indicator just so I can see. Now that's another good reason to put a pipe on so you can hear your RPMs. It is damn near silent here. At idle you can't hear a thing. I hear the bikes in front of me. That's it. Very smooth clutch. First gear is extremely short, 30 miles an hour, 45 for second, about 60 for third. But the pickup is excellent for what it is. I mean, it's obviously not gonna be pulling wheelies without a lot of clutch slip. But it's gonna keep up with most bikes, no problem. Certainly any cruiser. I definitely prefer it here shifting a little early around 9,000 gives you that little bit of a kick when you shift up nice in the corners it's obviously extremely flickable and lightweight wow and I've had my signals on that whole time I couldn't see them I didn't know exactly where to look and I didn't notice them it's just a little green light there on the left my bad now I see it. In direct sun, that's a little hard to see. <laughs> What's that? Oh yeah. I just realized I had my signals on. <laughs> Definitely a fun little bike, that is for sure. I haven't even looked at the sticker price yet. I'm gonna take a guess without, seriously, without looking. Uh, I would put this somewhere around 53, 5400. That's about what I would pay for it. But I will have to look it up here at the end of the ride because I'm curious. Would I buy one? That's a, that's a good question. I'm not turned off from it. That's for sure. It's a fun little bike. I was looking for, if I'm looking for something small like this, more of a sport bike though. This is definitely a full upright, normal naked bike position. I, I did think this was more of a sporty feel. And it's definitely not. It's a completely normal, standard bike. Very comfortable though. So the seat, excellent. I have no hot spots. It's very supportive. Quite firm and nice and wide. I've got a hump at the back of my butt. Very nice seat. There's a little bit of frame vibration that comes through, but I have no hot spots. So in fourth gear here, way up at 8,000, rolling on. Yeah, it's got a little pull. Let's kick down. Top gear at 60 miles an hour, roll on. Yeah, about the same. So, it, it, yeah, it's not gonna be a torque monster. Don't expect it to be, obviously I didn't, but it's definitely something you have to row through the gears on. And it's not a speed demon, but it is very fun. I could see this as a commuter bike all day long. Definitely a great city bike for sure. There is a sweet spot. I mean, there is a point where you keep it below nine, but say above four. That's got a nice little pull here in fifth gear at 60, more than fourth or six. So you would definitely get used to it, figure out where you want to be. Peg position is actually pretty good. I, I was expecting it to be a little cramped, but I'm not going to say it's roomy, but surprisingly, it's the same as my FJR. Let me put it that way. My FZ09 has a little bit more stretch. I'm not cramped. My knees are totally comfortable. My ankles are just fine. It's got much less of a cramp than any sport bike with rear sets. These are right in between my hips and my knees. So it's not straight down, but it's right in the middle. Again, very standard. And that's where my GoPro decided to completely shut off on me. First time it's ever happened to me. Looking online, apparently it's a common problem though. Hopefully it's just a fluke. I've done thousands of clips over the years, never had the problem, but today I got off that bike and the camera was off. Needless to say, I was pissed. Luckily, it was at the end of the ride. So that's it. Hope you enjoyed the review. Definitely a fun little bike. See ya.